This is QR Factory, which we've downloaded from the Tunabelly software website. The link is in the description below. It runs on macOS 10.11 or higher, and right now we're using 10.14 in dark mode. The first thing we're going to do is decide which type of QR code to create. The options are text, email, URL, location, phone, person, Wi-Fi, calendar, social, and SEPA, which is for credit transfers in the EU. For this video, we'll be creating a QR code that when scanned will open up a new email with the information pre-filled. So let's go ahead and add that in. First, we'll add in the email address. Then we'll add a CC, the subject, and finally the body. All right, so we have a nice QR code here, but let's make it look a little more professional. So we'll click on the customize button. The first thing we'll do is we're going to change the pixel roundness so that the corners are nice and round. Next, we're going to change the pixel color. Instead of being a solid color, we'll use a linear gradient. And we'll change the black into something a little nicer. We'll change the angle. So now we have a nice linear gradient from blue to red. Next, we're going to change the output size to 500 by 500 pixels. We can actually use anything up to 2048 pixels. Finally, we'd like to add an icon in the middle to make it look even nicer. So we'll choose Add Icon. And we're going to choose the Mail App icon, which we exported earlier. Now the icon size is a little too big, so we're going to scale it down so it fits nicely in the middle. And then finally, one nice feature of QR Factory is you can add a border that goes around the contours of the icon. Doesn't matter if, if it's a perfect circle, rectangle, or not, it'll follow them. So let's add a 20% border. So that looks nice. And then we're going to use the built-in verifier. We're going to click verify code to make sure that this code is indeed scannable. Sure enough, it's not. And that's because the icon in the middle is obscuring too much of the code. So to resolve this, we're going to go back to the customize dialog. We're going to change the reliability level to highest. We're going to verify the code again. Success. Now it works. So next up, we will save the code. So for saving, there's four options for the format. There's PNG and TIFF, which is for bitmap, which is good for sharing on the web. And there's PDF and EPS for vector, which is better for posters or printing since it scales infinitely without any loss of quality. For this example, we will be having the QR code for a business card. So let's choose TIFF and use the CMYK color space, which is great for printing. The other options are RGB and grayscale. And finally, you can also have the code rotated if necessary. For this, we'll leave it off. So we will save the code. All right, let's go take a look at the code. This code looks great. Very professional looking with a nice icon in the middle, border around it, nice linear gradient, and also rounded pixels. It looks great. Now, just to verify that the code is saved properly, we can see that it is indeed a TIFF image. It's 500 by 500 pixels. It's in the CMYK color space, and there's no alpha channel. Now, however, it would have an alpha channel if we had chosen a transparent background. We hope you enjoyed seeing how easy it is to create amazing looking professional QR codes. A free demo with no restrictions can be downloaded with the link below. You can also purchase it on our website or through the App Store, again, in the links below. Thanks for watching.